Hello, Oceana Cruisers. Um, I'm Frank Heider here, one of the artist in residence. Today I'm going to talk to you about choosing the right brush and how to take care of it. All right, I have in front of me a number of brushes. If you go to an art supply store, there's just so many brushes you don't know what to do. So I'm going to talk about the principal types of brushes, give you a little information that's very specific, but in a very general way, and, teach, and tell you how to take care of your brushes. Okay, now, the first type of brushes I have over here are known as oil painting brushes. Now, what makes them oil painting brushes is they are using bristle hair. And these happen to have wooden handles. This is called the shank, and this is called the, the bristle, and this is called the handle. Now, the handle can be shorter, it can be thinner, it can even be made out of plastic, but it's always the handle. There's always as much bris bristle inside the shank as there is outside. So when you clean your brushes and you use your brushes, you've got to be mindful of the fact that the paint wants to travel up those brushes inside of here. So if you notice, you buy a brand new brush, you clean it, you lay it down, you come back and you pick it up a couple of days later and it's very hard. Why? Because you didn't get the paint out from the inside. So the first thing I do before I use an oil brush or an acrylic brush or a watercolor brush is I dip it in a little water and the water will go up inside and block some of the passage of some of that paint. Whether I'm gonna paint in oil or not, the water will not affect it. Now, this is called a flat, this is called a bright. Notice that the bristles are just a little bit shorter on a bright, okay? Uh, there are also brushes called rounds. Notice the rounded tip. And lastly, there are sables. Sables are marked by a very, very, very soft bristle. Sables generally are taken from small furry rodents, such as squirrels or mink or other kinds of small animals. Uh, the bristle in an acrylic brush, which is synthetic, and you can see when you touch it, it just feels more polyester-like, all right? Why do we use that with acrylic paint? Because the character of the paint is different. Okay, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. So now I've kind of talked about what we call the painting brushes, but there are specialized brush moments where the handles are really long, and you can actually get handle extenders for these for working on large surfaces or at great distances, or if your eyes are going a little bad and you wanna see things at a distance, and step back, you can paint with a paintbrush with a longer handle. Generally, these are called scenic brushes because they're used in stage painting, but the long handles are, some, are just what some people want. Okay, now, this is a brand new brush and it's very supple and very easy to move. This brush is 30 years old and notice how supple and easy to move it is, all right? It may be stained, but it's still very usable. Why? Because I take care of them and clean them correctly. So now I'm gonna move from what we call the classic painting brushes over here to water-based paint brushes. These are all sable-like brushes for working with watercolors or with gouache, okay? They sometimes have very strange specialized endings, and that's for making marks that are very specific. Or this is a classic made famous by Bob Ross, the fan brush, which is famous for its ability to make trees or puffy clouds. Um, and so these brushes generally have shorter handles because you're doing closer work and you're not having it on an easel, you're working on a flat surface. All right, the next group of brushes I'm gonna talk about are brushes for applying varnishes and or gessos or primers, okay? These brushes are larger 
but it's still very good quality and they are for applying uh, such finishes as varnishes to the top coat of a painting. This is a varnishing brush for an acrylic painting. It's very soft and it looks like a house painting brush. This is a house painting brush. Notice how much thicker it is. If you go to an art supply store, they'll encourage you to buy this for spreading gesso. I do not recommend. You're gonna use much more gesso buying this brush and it sells a lot of gesso. Uh, you'd be much smarter with a thinner body bristle like this one here. Now, over here, these are fine quality European handmade watercolor brushes, all right? These are of very nice quality and they're made for beautiful hand work with watercolors. My last candidate for brush here, these are Chinese brushes. Chinese brushes are almost always just for painting in watercolor, mostly black and white, but they work just fine in color. This set I bought in China when I went there with the World Cruise ship uh, two years ago. Um, this brush has been in steady use every day since two years ago, still very soft. It's not as, as shiny white as its brother here, but it's in excellent condition and one of my personal favorite brushes. Uh, Chinese brushes come in enormous sizes in different kinds of shapes, but generally they have these beautiful soft bristles and when you wet them, they take on beautiful shape and can make a beautiful big brush stroke. Okay, now the last thing I want to talk about is the three kinds of paint I have here in front. This is oil paint. It's heavy, it's thicker, and it's messier. If you get oil paint on your clothes, it doesn't come out very easily. And we don't use it on the ships for that reason because it tends to want to participate in all the other activities outside of the artist loft with a single little carried drop. These are the, sh the kinds of colors we generally use on the ship, which are acrylic. There is absolutely no difference between uh, these colors pigment-wise from oil color. The difference is this uses an acrylic vehicle or acrylic medium to make the paint, and this uses linseed oil to make the, the vehicle of the paint. The next type of paint I have here is watercolor. Watercolor, acrylic, and oil all use the same pigments. Difference is the vehicle. In watercolor, it's gum arabic, which is dissolvable in water. Not any difference between the color here that you see in this cake set of watercolors and a tube color. The difference is that some people just like to be able to spread the color out bigger uh, than in the cake. There's really no difference in the quality of the color. The cost of the color generally indicates the quality of the paint. The more pigment it has, the more expensive it is. A sim single tube of, of orange of paint like this in oil paint is going to be about $40. A gallon of oil paint with this quality of, of pigment would be six or $700 not like Home Depot house paint, but it's because of the quality of the pigment. All right, now we've got the sense of what we work with, what we choose to work with. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is how do we take care of these and keep a 30 year old brush as soft as one that's brand new. And the secret is a single bar of soap, or ordinary ivory soap. If you dip in a little water, put it on your hands, like I'm doing right here. Don't rinse it off, but let it air dry. When you're done painting, you wash your hands and all the paint will come off. It's as if you were wearing rubber gloves. But when you wanna clean your brushes, you dip them in water, you then take them to the, to the, the, the bar of soap and you using a circular motion, spread it around and you keep working it in the palm of your hand until 
it no longer sheds any color at all. Rinse it thoroughly, point it with your fingers like I'm doing here, and then place it upright to dry. The water will run downhill and will not, the paint that's trapped inside the shank will not go into your bristles. Bris br bristles. So tomorrow, your paintbrush will still be as soft as it was today. Thank you for this. I hope this has helped you, but I look forward to seeing you when we get back on the ships very soon.